So far, we've seen two different operations on vectors. We had vector addition, where I took two vectors, both in Rn. We added them together and it spat out a third vector in Rn. We also had a notion of scalar multiplication. This is a bit weird. On the one hand, we were going to have a scalar, something in R, and in the other, we would have a vector in Rn. And when you multiply those together, you got out a vector in Rn. So you'll notice that multiplications don't have to begin with the same thing. They don't have to end with the same thing. But neither of those was really a notion of one vector multiplied to another vector. So I'm going to give a candidate for such a notion, something that we're going to call either the dot product or the inner product or the scalar product. These words are going to be used interchangeably. But what it means is you take two vectors and you're going to combine them in the following way. I'm going to begin with a vector x. I'm going to write a dot here. That's where the dot product comes from. Not just juxtaposition of putting them beside each other. I'm going to write a dot there. And then I'm going to come and put the vector y. And this is defined to be equal to the following thing. I use the colon to show that the thing on the left is being defined by the thing on the right. What I do is I take the first component of x and the first component of y and I multiply them. So this is x1, y1, where those are the two first components. And then I do the same thing in the second components, and all the way down the line, until I take the nth component of x, and I multiply it to the nth component of y. And this is the definition of my dot product. Now I want you to note that the x and the y that I have here, these two things, that, that they're both living inside of Rn. This is vectors in Rn. But what I have on the right-hand side, this is just the sums and the products of numbers. That is, this is just some number, or in other words, it is an element not of Rn, but only of R. So the dot product takes two things that are going to be in Rn and spits out something in R. Now, I could define all sorts of bizarre other types of multiplication. Perhaps I would define one that put a square here and a cube there. But if I'm going to be defining a multiplication, it should be use useful to us. There should be a point to it. There should be a geometric analog of this algebraic definition. So I can't just write down this definition and, and leave you with it. I have to argue that it's valuable in some sense. Now, before I do that, I want to just quickly note a couple algebraic properties. So the first property that this thing satisfies algebraically is that if I take the dot product x dot y, which we've, we've seen how that's going to be defined, that I can take any one of these and I can rearrange it the other way around. So, for example, I could rearrange it and write it as y1 x1 because it's just going to be multiplication of numbers and multiplication of numbers commutes. And so then I can do the same thing all the way along, and I can write it as yn, xn, and finally I can say that this is just the vector y dotted with the vector x. So in other words, I can commute my dot product, or I can change the order in which it's written. The dot product also is going to play nicely with vector addition. So for example, if I have vector x and I add to it vector y, and then as a third operation, I take the dot product with vector z, then this is just going to be the same thing as x dot y plus y dot z. And I'll let you pause and do all the algebra of expanding this definition to verify this is the case. And there's more, but the point is that this algebraic operation obeys a lot of nice algebraic rules that allow you to manipulate it basically the exact same way that you do with numbers, even though it isn't just the multiplication of numbers. All right, so those are a few algebraic things. Now to the geometric. The first thing I want to do is I want to imagine that we're just living in two different dimensions, all right? And that what I'm going to have is some vector. This is the vector x, and I could do a sort of vertical projection down here, and I would say the first component is the x1, and the second component, that's going to be the x2. Now suppose I wanted to know the length of this vector x. In other words, I wanted to know what the length 
of that vector x was going to be. And I, I typically are just going to denote this by putting double bars around it, kind of like an absolute value, but, but double thick. So then what I'm going to do is say that this is a Pythagorean triangle. It's a right triangle. There's a 90 degree down here. So I can take this length that I'm trying to compute, and by Pythagoras, I can say that the square of it is just going to be equal to the x1 squared plus the x2 squared, and, and that this is true by Pythagoras. But then if I look at this x1 squared plus x2 squared formula, that this is just the same thing as the vector x dotted with the vector x. Again, indeed, if it's a vector, a dot product of itself, the first two components are the same thing, so it's just x1 squared. And then the second two components are the same thing, so it's just x2 squared. So in two dimensions, we can use a notion of length to be this dot product between the two vectors, or at least the square root of the dot product between these two vectors. If I wanted to get rid of the square there, I'd have to put a square root in and a square root. So what I am going to suggest is that if I want to know what the notion of the length of a vector is, not in R2, but in Rn, what, what is our notion of the length of an n-dimensional vector? I am going to define it to be precisely the higher dimensional analog of what we have here. That is, and note this is a definition, I am not claiming length is equal to this where I previously understand length, I'm going to define it the length of a vector x denoted by this double absolute value, the length of vector x, sometimes called norm of x, um, the length of x by the length of x equals the square root of the vector x dotted with the vector x. So I've taken a two-dimensional property and I've generalized it to the higher dimensions.